For more tips and tricks, don't forget to hit that button and subscribe. Also, ring the bell so you can get notifications anytime I have new videos. Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. I'm Paul Ricaldi and this is my son Blake. Today we're going to replace the patron soffit. Someone before us improperly installed this. We have a strip of wood all the way around covering a gap and it is not matching the groove in the fascia. You see right here they fell short of it and they put another little board, a little strip on top of it to match the groove. So we're just going to pull that out and we'll make it all match. First thing we got to do is get up in this corner because we don't want to take this drip edge off if we don't have to. This corner it's real tight because I have valley flashing right there that goes in and that's galvanized metal, sheet metal and it's stiff. So I will, I will have a hard time getting that out. Instead of tackling that what I'm going to do is cut this with my multi-tool, pull this fascia out and then we'll get that little piece out of there. So then I can just take my next piece slip it back up there. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give one of these Louisville Pinnacle ladders away. So you'll be one of the first to ever have it. I have a carbide tip on here so I can cut the nails. So, a couple of hits. Take this out. There's going to be a backer board on here, a subfascia. Pull it down. It had termites in here at one time. Now they're dead, it's all dry, but they didn't change the subfascia. I'm gonna go ahead and pull all of this fascia off as well now that I know they had a problem in here, and that's why I saw a little rot in the corner that was patched and it was never done properly, so I wanted to fix that. You just make it look right. So next we're going to take this piece of fascia off, going to cut out this corner, and then we'll remove it. There are so many useful things you can do with the Swanson Speed Square. This is one of them. I have videos showing that and uh, different things that you can do with it, and they'll be in the description box below. But right here, I just took the diamond that they have on there, and I ran a screw right into that diamond, holding it tight from the upper part, because I could not take my square this way. It would hit the roof. I couldn't get it tight up there. I slipped it up, ran a screw. It was tight and I got a nice clean line to work with. I have a lot of different features that I show on here and little modifications. You'll want to check that out in the description box below. And let's get this up. Measurement. We have to take and get this trim off here, here, all the way around. That's what's holding the back side of the soffit up. There are so many different attachments you can get for these uh, tools, this multi-tool. This one right here is made to cut drywall and things be behind. It's made to hook behind it and cut. So I can get in here where the caulk is and just run it down instead of killing my fingers trying to cut the caulk. Now I can pull this puppy out.
Another reason for having quick connect shutters, like I showed in the previous videos, I can take this off to get my soffit out and just slip them back on when I'm finished. They're not in the way. Normally, I would have these nailed or screwed in and it would be hard to get off to get my soffit out of them. But now, they easily slide off and I'll easily slide them back on when I'm done. Take this loose, make sure everything's disconnected from the breaker. If you don't like me up here. I'm about to swat him. Uh, goodbye. All right. Nice. I'm going to cut my caulk right there, run it along here, pull this whole piece out, I'm going to fix all of this. Needs a little TLC. I'm replacing this one, but I cut it on an angle, the same pitch as my roof, so I can set it on there and it's, it's going to sit in the right spot, right on my sheathing. Right here, I'm going to cut my subfascia a little bit shorter. It'll be lower here, but when I come out here, it'll still touch the roof. Okay, we'll put this subfascia in place. I had cut a piece yesterday that was left over. But it was unfortunately warped. I'm gonna make my cut slightly deeper than the, the 3 8 inch plywood, so a half inch will be good. I'm gonna cut this on top of the foam, that way it keeps everything flat, it's easy to cut. I've got my spider blade on here, for those are some slick blades, I like them a lot. I've been real happy with it. My vent's gonna go right here, so we need it to be 26 inches from the side, which I marked. Now we're gonna have it six to 12, and then we're gonna have it 14 inches over. So I already have those marks. We need to put our box right here. I'm gonna center it. It's gonna be nine inches to the center. If you have not tried out the Spider two-sided blades, you're missing out. These are awesome little blades for different uses. And right here, I'm gonna use it for this. Cuts front and back. And circles, that's crazy. Another great Spider product you just can't beat. They have a special feature on here where you push this down, it'll pop this piece off. She got his baby fits. As long as I protrude a little bit past that fascia, an eighth of an inch, I'm good. So I'm only going to tack one tack over here because I want to be able to move this. I'm not exactly sure if it's, if it's square. One shot. That's all I need. We'll get another measurement. 54 on the money. 54. You want to have a block in there to make these things meet. And it's tacked to this board and here. So when I max the other one up to it, I'll have a nice tight seam. Unfortunately, I don't have my buddy Blake with me, my son. He's at work today, so I'm going to put this up. I have my, it's a third hand by FastCap. I'll put the link in the description box. Make sure it fits right.
You always want to split your seam on a piece of wood. I have a two by going across there. I want half of it on this side and half on this side so I can shoot it on both sides and get that seam tight. Before you cut your piece, make sure you have the right groove lined up. This has the quarter inch on the top and the three eighths on the bottom. That's what I want. I want to match up with my three eighths piece. If I had quarter inch off it, I'd flip it around and that quarter inch one would go right there. So we're going to measure this off 113 and 7 eighths inches. Take my saw and set it at 45 degrees. This will be my bottom line. I should have marked it from the bottom to begin with. Alright. What I'm gonna do is get a screw and run in high on it where I can easily fill it. Put it under the drip edge. Now all I want to do is hold it in place right there. That'll keep it from moving. Ah, better. I'm not in the groove right here. That groove has to fit with this plywood. You want it to slot in there to fit so it all fits tight and it's not kicked out. You see that? We'll take and run a screw in there real quick. We'll pull that dog down. There you go. Take my screw out from up top. Two tiny little putty holes and we're done. This is where you want to be separated from the average DIYer. The average DIYer, or sometimes contractor, would just caulk this gap. I'm not going to do that. The reason why I have a gap at the bottom is because there's a slight crown on this board, and you can't force it in in the center. So what I'm going to do is take and cut a one and a half degree angle. So it's going to be a little bit longer at the bottom than the top, and that will make this close when it's all put together. It'll close that gap. I'll set this at one and a half degrees. Now we will set this back at 45 degrees. Lock it in place. Make sure that you clear this. And we'll make a quick template. You can't tell there, but when we go to put it in, it should be just right. This is Tight Bond 3. It's a little bit watery. It's an excellent exterior glue. So you might get a little drip. You're going to want to wipe it after with a wet rag. Oh, sweet. Nice. I want to bring this down a little bit right here, if I can. There you go. Now it's even. Well, this came out super cool and I am extremely pleased. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, please hit me up. We are gonna choose two winners for some products. First place winner, is going to win a pinnacle cross step ladder. You have a platform that you can stand on, you can put all your tools on, you can fold it up. 
and then still winging it up against a corner of a house or a post, and I have a platform to stand on or put my tools on. Great design. It enables you to get right next to the wall where other ladders won't do it. This is touching the bottom of the post, and you can see I'm right on it. I love this ladder, and it has a 375-pound weight capacity. The second person chosen is going to win a spider care package. You have some blades here, reciprocating and jigsaw, and then we have a whole saw kit. We're going to choose from the first 100 people that comment. And you have to look for your name in the description box because we're going to post your name in the description box for five days. You have to get back with me within that five days. When you do, you hit me up with a reply, say you're the winner, and then I can get your information and mail this stuff off to you. I'll see you guys on the next project. Don't forget to subscribe and keep up the projects.